All right, class, so let's look at um, blood glucose regulation between meals. Okay, so we talked about what happens after you eat. Now let's look at what happens between meals. Okay, so if you think about it, um, we as humans eat three meals a day, or some people even even two, and um, we yet we stay in homeostasis. So this idea of we eat right here, so breakfast we ate, and then we store, right, back to homeostasis. Then we use the storage for a while, then we eat again, and then we store, and then we use that storage for a while, and then we eat, and then we store, especially for a night, right? When you store that food away, what you're using at night is that stuff dinner that you had and to go through the eight hour sleep. And then in the morning, you break the fast and you eat breakfast. Okay, or bre breakfast. So let's take a look at what happens in between meals. So remember, after eating is storage. Between meal is, um, between meal is, uh, you're actually done using the storage, releasing the storage. Okay, so think about storage after a meal and between meal is releasing from storage. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So while eating hyperglycemia has long-term damage on the blood vessels, hypoglycemia can be critically dangerous because you're not lacking the energy needed um, to allow your muscles to work and allow your brain to work. So at a lower blood glucose level, you might just feel tired and low on energy. But in critical hypoglycemia, the brain can actually shut down. Okay. Fortunately, if you have normal blood glucose regulation, um, you will not um, experience critical hypoglycemia that easily. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look. Between meal or if you skip the meal, right? Step one. So between meal and you, if you skip the meal, your blood glucose will be low. Okay, so this is lower than, say, low in between 70 milligrams per deciliter in your blood. So you can measure that in the blood. So the low blood glucose is going to turn on the alpha cell now. The alpha cell is on, and you're going to secrete the hormone glucagon. The beta cell has already been shut off. Remember, once your blood glucose is in homeostasis, the beta cell should be shut off because you're not storing anymore. Okay, so the blood glucose, once it's normal, the beta cells have been off and insulin has been low. Okay, so let's first talk about, look at, if you don't have insulin, you don't have the key to unlock the storage locker, the muscle and the fat and the liver cannot uptake. So that's when the glucose going through the transport cannot take glucose, Okay. So in the first thing that happens, glucose is not taken from blood. But then you need more than that. So you need more than um, more than just not taking. You need to have some glucose released so then the blood can stay in homeostasis. So this is the action of glucagon. Glucagon acts on the liver to take glucose out of storage. Glucagon cannot take glucose out of muscle storage. Muscle do not share their glucose storage with the whole body. So the gly glycogen that you put away in muscle cells earlier, if this is a muscle cell storage, that's just, you open the storage locker for muscle and that's just for muscle, okay? Only glucose in the liver are done for the whole body, including the muscle. Okay, so the gl glucose in the liver is what's gonna sustain you between meals, okay? So glucagon comes to the liver and it's gonna take that glycogen from storage, break it down and release glucose into the blood, okay? So the glycogen storage is not released. It's also, it can start making glucose from other things, but this is a little slower process. So it can make glucose for converting um, some of the fat and other things to make glucose. If liver glycogen is limited because your liver is only about three pounds, okay, so there's not a lot of storage space for um, glucose in the liver. So at some point, you're going to deplete 
that glycogen very quickly. Okay. So when the glycogen is being depleted and is depleting, what's going to happen is you're going to have to count on fat. Okay. So fat breakdown is going to start increasing to give you energy. So you're going to release the fat and then it can also come into the liver. Um, a little, some of that fat is being made to glucose, but then you're also going to start a process called ketogenesis in the liver. So ketogenesis happens in the liver, and what it is is taking that fat and breaking it down for energy. But you will make this product called, called, product called ketone. Ketone is released into the blood. Your brain can burn a little bit of that ketone for energy, but it is an organic compound, and sometimes it can make people who burn the ketone in their brain, almost like a drunk feeling, like a little bit hazy and things like that, okay? Ketone at low level is not dangerous, but at high level, um, ketone can become quite dangerous, and that's called um, blood ketoacidosis, and we'll talk about that later on, okay? I'm just giving you an overview of the whole process here. But as you break down liver glycogen and put that into the blood, decreasing octane. It's, but especially it's the glucose from the liver that's going to increase the blood glucose to homeostasis. It's going to shut off the alpha cells. If you eat, the process ends, and then you can switch over to um, the insulin side. But if you don't eat, continue not to eat, then it's going to continue to go on this glucagon side, and then it's going to take, um, make glucose uh, take from the storage, the glycogen storage. Okay, and then make ketones. Okay, so that's the process. It's a little complicated, but like I said, you want to take it step by step by looking at what happened here, explain. But also, I, you want to take a moment to play those animation on seeing how in hypoglycemia, the glucagon here is what's acting on the liver cell. Okay, where it's just then it's going to send glucose to the blood. Okay, remember. Glucagon does not have an action on liver, on the muscle, sorry, muscle and fat cells. But let's draw it out and see what happens, okay? Okay, so here's the drawing, but I'm going to also draw a new one for you, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at what happens. So we, we do the same thing here, right? But this time, we're going to put that there is no food. So either you skip the meal or you, you're between meals. So this might be like you ate breakfast at 6, and this might be, you know, starting at 9 o'clock. Or it depends on the breakfast, but let's just say 9 o'clock, okay? So again, your pancreas, the alpha cells, are going to release glucagon. So here I'm going to write little g, little gl as glucagon, as the hormone. So it's going to come in. Uh, let's see what I use. Little gl use. So we can just do gl. It's okay. Okay, so little gl is coming in here. So gl, gl, gl. So remember, you do have still have some glucose, but just not a lot. So we just, let's just put two here. Okay, so you have low blood glucose, high glucagon at this point, right? So you can look at low blood glucose, high uh, glucagon. So what you're going to do is the cell that will release the, glu uh, the glucose is the liver. So I'm going to put liver. I'm going to put a receptor. So the receptor is for glucagon. So glucagon is going to bind to the receptor in the liver. And what it's going to do is going to open up the glucose transporter. At this point, remember your liver, if you ate a meal, like breakfast, if you ate a meal before, um, say this is lunchtime, you ate breakfast, so glycogen from the breakfast is going to break down, reverse the process of what you did for breakfast, and break into glucose, okay? And these glucose are going to leave the liver and go into the blood. So it's going to keep on doing this 
until the glycogen is depleted. Um, but um, but um, you can see that if you then eat your lunch, then your glycogen is not depleted, and then you then take the lunch food and replace that. But anyway, the, what's going on here is the glycogen from the breakfast is being released all into the blood to sustain your blood glucose until lunchtime. Okay, so breakfast to lunch, or same thing, dinner to breakfast. Okay, so you can review that and see how that works. Practice a number of times, go through these steps, and um, practice the animation, and go through the process along with the words. So this is hypoglycemia between meals. How do you maintain blood glucose homeostasis? Um, next, I'll talk about how you prolong starvation, prolong unable to use glucose, what would happen, okay?